How do you start to do something in an opera? It makes Lord of the Rings seem quite pedestrian. We'd never uh, thought that we would ever do an opera. We probably haven't done an opera. We've just done something that kind of sort of has elements of opera within it, but it's also kind of it's got electronica, it's sort of it's got an element of Saturday morning kids' TV, it's, um, there's kung fu, there's incredible acrobatics. We were approached four years ago by a man called Alex Poots from the, Internet, the Manchester International Festival, who said, would we like to um, work with um, a famous Chinese opera? director and do uh, a version of Monkey, Journey to the West, which was a story that um, we were both familiar with from our childhood. Well, our first impression uh, was simply Monkey, great. That was the program we watched when we were 11 year olds, um, because in, in, in Britain, we had um, a very popular show called Monkey, that had been made uh, in the 70s in Japan. It had really bad English overdubs and was very kitsch, but it was a lot of fun. We were interested straight away because we remembered, remembered the story very well. We remembered the characters very well and printed on our brains. So, so we said, yeah, we're, we're interested, but you need to uh, fly us to China and um, give us a guided tour. So we went to China. We met with Shi Zheng, the director, and we travelled with him around rural China for a few weeks. And we decided that we wanted to do the project. We, we, we connected with him, we liked him, we thought he was a very interesting character. And I, I have to sort of emphasise that he, he took us over. He was our guide through the whole thing. Um, he took us down to the southern provinces where the Dong and the Miao people live, um, which is an incredibly beautiful exotic place, uh, not the China that, that, that any of us have, have seen, and let's face it, the China that we, that we knew up until a few years ago was one which really um, was seen through, through the window of an uh, uh, insane red-coloured army displays in Tiananmen Square once a year. You know, in the West we have a certain arrogance, which we're not even aware of, I don't think, where, you know, we, we really assume that everyone's kind of moving towards being like us or, or, or is like us, where, 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 whereas China really does its own thing. And we did say that it's the first time, well, the first time I've ever worked on a project that a, 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 a classic story that already exists, where in fact you don't actually have to write anything, it's there, it's already been done, it's been done many, 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 yeah, many you, you times. Get, you get to an age where you, where, where you do start gravitating towards sort of 
great stories that have already been written. <laughs> and then put your spin on it. And if it's something that you, you're really into and you, you, you respect and you love, then, then, yeah, then it's very enjoyable. Yeah, you understand it and, and then you just become part of, 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 of a bigger thing and that's nice, you know, because yeah. the older you get, the more you realise that that's actually more and much more important than yourself. The story of Monkey is uh, um, about the character Monkey. He's the Monkey King, but he decides that he wants to be immortal. He wants to be a god, and um, he basically uh, gate crashes a party in heaven, which he isn't invited to, and, and, and proclaims that he is a sage equal to heaven, he should be a god. Uh, and is uh, punished and uh, banished under a mountain for 500 years by Buddha. Finally, Buddha thinks that he's kind of uh, served his time, um, and he's released on the one condition that he uh, helps accompany the uh, priest Tripitaka to northern India to uh, retrieve these um, holy scriptures. And along the way, they pick up Pigsy and Sandy, the river demon, who are also two characters who have both done something to upset the gods and have both been punished and are both given the opportunity to redeem themselves. And so they set forth on this fantastic journey um, and they meet all, all manner of demons along the way and they have a wonderful adventure. So it's a journey to enlightenment. We weren't aware that it was actually a 16th century sort of political allegory that had become a classic of uh, Mandarin literature. I, th I think it was important to try and tell us in it with a sense of contemporary China in mind, and, and, that, and, and, and that's what, what I tried to do when I was writing the music. When you start writing in a Chinese style, I mean, because to the Western ear, it's five notes that seem to sort of be very repetitive, and it doesn't seem to go anywhere. And I, I had a few. I had, I had a really important breakthrough where I um, I was staring at the the, the communist five point star, and then I put, put five five notes of the pentatonic scale on, on each um, point of the star, and then imagined what that might sound like if you started to rotate lots of these stars with these notes. But rotating at different at different speeds and stuff, and then out of that came came a number system, um, which helped me play around with with the pentatonic scale. It's really hard with, 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 in a Western sensibility to, to write in the pentatonic in a kind of sort of free way because it, you always end up going din 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 you know and it always sounds it sounds like how you expect Chinese music to sound but without any of the integrity I just kind of sort of recorded everything and I met lots of musicians and I and I sort of I looked at everything as being music, from car horns to the sound of elevators, and just just tried to work with that when I got back to, to London. I, I just approached it very simply. I just listened, you know, which is generally a good policy when you're making music. Just listen. <laughs> We decided that, you know, we wanted young, modern Chinese kids. They've kind of grown up with sort of bad Western music for the last five, six, seven years. So they kind of sounded a bit, a bit like Pop Idol when we first auditioned them, you know, so we had to sort of beat that out of them, so to speak.
and just make them sing a sort of more sort of folky, natural, using the sound of Mandarin, which is which was a decision I made very early on. Why we're doing this in Mandarin? You know, we're doing this for a, a, a Western audience. We should be doing it in in English. Um, but I, I felt that that would be like sort of it would be like bad overdubbing if we, if we if we did in English, you know. Um, and I, I love the sound of just I, I love going into cultures where I don't actually understand a word. In fact, I find it blissful, you know, just because you. You have a certain innocence, and, um, and and because you're not worried about what people are saying, you know, you listen you listen to it in a far more musical way.